We're talking about Congressman uh, Chris Gibson before going on the air. He wants to uh, have a nuclear power plant in the capital region. What are your thoughts on nuclear energy? I know there's Governor Cuomo wants to close Indian Point down around New York City. Uh, I... I don't really believe in nuclear energy. I, okay. I think that it's a that it's nice. It's very clean, but um, it, it just takes one disaster that we're not aware of, and that that could happen. That could could really affect all of our lives. Uh, I think that most important is battery storage. If we can have some way of storing the solar energy or wind energy, storing it for consumption at night is a is a safer route. What do you think about natural gas energy, getting your energy from natural gas? Well, we've been getting it for, from natural gas for years, but we just have to, um, it would be nice to know what is being pushed into the ground to get that energy out of the, that gas out of the ground. So you're kind of uh, concerned about fracking? Yes. Yes, I'd like to know what's being pushed into the ground, and if that could, if we would, if we could know what that was, and then maybe do it in a safer manner, but. I think of natural gas and oil as um, a savings account. We keep it in the ground and utilize what we have now and use our technology that we have presently. We have it being developed here, um, down the road at SUNY Albany, at Nanotech, at um, RPI. Um, why not take, take technology and, uh, and utilize that and keep that as a savings account? As you know, there's some controversy in New York State right now about an oil pipeline going through the state in this area. Your thoughts on that, is that something that you're neutral on or are you opposed to it? Or um, I probably would be opposed to that also because I know several people who um, are being, it's their land and they're being forced or and they might be forced to have it run over their land and what are they going to get paid if, if anything ever happens, if there's a spill? One thing you were telling me the other day on the phone that solar energy helps us appreciate our trees and our forests. It's very good for the trees and forests and we should appreciate them more than we do. Why don't we elaborate on that a little? Well, I guess when you do go green, you do have a, there's a different feeling from, from, from purchasing a vehicle. Unless maybe you're purchasing an electric vehicle, you're, you're, you're very enthused. Um, when you purchase green energy, there's a sense of well-being and there's a sense of that I've done something right for this, for our world. Um, and it gives you an appreciation. We, we're not cutting down trees. We're not, we're not removing mountains to get to, our, to get to the coal that, again, could be stored as a bank if we ever need it. And um, there is a, an appreciation more for life and nature. Are we finding uh, that people are now, I heard they're in their primitive stages, but we have solar cars now. I want to talk about that. Yeah, and in an essence, they are partially, they are solar cars. They might have solar um, cells on, on the vehicle that are absorbing energy, um, but they can be solar powered in, in essence by, if you have a solar system at your home and you're plugging in, um, you could be receiving your electrons from that sun. And so it would be ultimately a solar-powered car. So that would be, a high, in other words, charging your uh, hybrid car that way? Yes. What about just a vehicle that is solar where it, it relies, you know, it has a, an auto version of a solar panel on it? Is that, has that happened yet? Oh, yes. Yes. There's actually one developed at RPI and, uh, on the race across America. Um, they're, not, they're not really for um, the public's, for the not, public as of yet. Not but, yet. But uh, they have to have quite a bit of solar collectors on the surface area of the vehicle. What about airplanes? Uh, that's coming along also. And I've, I've heard there are ships now that in the Navy or some navies around the world that use solar energy. Yes. Well, we have electric ships or electric submarines right now, but they're nuclear powered submarines. But one day they will, I believe, uh, well, may, may not the submarines, but the ships can, will be able to transition to partial solar, if not maybe full, depending upon technology. Would you explain the tax benefits to our viewers today about uh, that they'll benefit get with solar energy? Uh, well, you have a New York State income tax credit. Your New York State income tax credit is a 25%, is 25% of your out-of-pocket cost capped at $5,000. Your federal income tax credit is 30% uncapped. So you have 
up to five years to take the New York State income tax credit and six years to take the federal income tax credit. Generally, people can take both of them within the first or definitely within the two years. Now, people say, well, this money is coming out of my tax dollars. Well, an income tax credit is money that, you, that you've personally paid into the government and you're getting back your own money that you've paid in. So, yes, it's coming out of the whole kitty of money that goes into the government, but it is your money that you have paid in. Now, this show can be seen in uh Vermont, as well as in the state of Massachusetts, as well as New York State. Is there a similar, similar situation for tax credits in those states? Because I know you said you operate there. Yes, it is similar, but there's um, what's called a feed-in tariff. So when you feed in power into the grid in Vermont, you get a premium, you get paid a premium dollar amount. Say, for instance, you, you feed it in, that your cost is 17 cents a kilowatt hour you're feeding it in, in at say 22 cents a kilowatt hour. So during the day, you try to, you're encouraged to keep everything off, all the appliances off and get that premium and that's how you receive your payback. What difference is solar energy making in the environment right now? Is there a noticeable, noticeable difference as far as the quality of air? Um, <clears throat> I would say as you get down towards the city, you would probably notice it more with the transition of the vehicles. The vehicles. That's where maybe we might, might not be seeing it now, but in the future as cities transition more to electrified propulsion, um, we'll see a reduction. With the uh, current administration in Washington, do you find federal legislators and the administration here in New York State and Vermont and Massachusetts are more receptive to solar energy than they have been in the past? Oh, definitely. Everybody is pushing forward to their goals, whether they're at their 2020 goals or 2025 or 2030 goals. They're moving forward and, and quite rapidly, and we're ahead in a lot of cases. Now, the Pope recently uh, visited the United States, and he has been very pro-solar energy and very pro-environment. Congressman Chris Gibson, we were talking about, also issued uh, a similar uh, statement regarding the environment. Things are changing. Yes, yes. We now have, we have the Pope <laughs> promoting uh, the environment. What sort of an impact has the uh, papal proclamation had that happened a couple months ago? Well, I, I guess it, it hasn't had any direct impact or influence as of yet, but it, it is having, um, people are talking and people are realizing that, that this is, um, that, that it's important that we do take, take advantage of what we have. We have the sun raining down. And, it's to, and I, I believe he said something about honoring what we've been given. Solar energy has been helping uh, the farmers of New York State. Would you elaborate on that a little bit? And you were actually we were talking about Agriculture Commissioner Richard Ball. Yes. Well, um, there's up until recently, there's been grants available from the USDA to go solar, plus the NYSERDA grants um, and the tax credits. Now, farmers generally cannot take advantage of those tax credits, but if they're able to get the USDA grant and the NYSERDA grant, uh, there can be a payback. But also farmers have the opportunity to um, possibly lease out a portion of their property for a community solar project thereby reducing their cost of energy because they're going to get paid on a yearly basis a, a lease for that property. Um, and uh, there are companies that will be coming out, they'll be giving them a reduced rate in their, in their electric consumption. Do you find more and more farmers are going solar? It's, it's to their benefit or is staying the traditional way more practical at this point? Well, they've been farming um, for many, they've been farming um, vegetables and corn for many years, and so they're just farming the sun. And they generally have open space, that, that's, and that's what we, we require. We only have a few minutes left. For people that are not informed about solar energy, why don't you give them a mini lesson to, as we wrap up the show? Um, well, solar is, it, it's a beautiful thing. Um, here in the Northeast, you, well, you put the solar panels up, it's going to create you energy. It's going to create you energy from March until November. There are what's called net metering rules that allow you to push power back into the grid and get credit. So from March until November, you build up a credit. 
you use that credit up at night and on rainy days, but generally you get you get fairly far ahead in those months. You then, when the, when the weather turns in November, December, January, February, you're using up those credits. You'll produce a little bit extra at cer on certain days, or you'll shave down your load on certain days, but you will, you'll use it up and then we encourage an individual to zero, have a zero out date or anniversary date on March 1st. If you have extra credits, you use those up with heat in February. You look at how many kilowatt hours of credit do I have, let me use that up. And on March 1st, you're zeroed out. If you have excess, you'll be paid at a wholesale rate on that day of, for your excess power. So it's, you're encouraged to use it up because you're getting paid at retail rate the entire year except for on your anniversary date. Now you work for a solar construction company and I know yours is not the only one in New York State. Is that where a person should go or is it pretty obvious where one should go to get solar energy or are you guys kind of hard to find? Uh, well, no, you have to look for a certified installer. You can go onto an ICERTA site and you'll see who the certified installers are in your area. And you can go, I would encourage talking to at least three or four of them. Don't, don't go with the first one, but talk to a few. And what will they be telling you? Your cost and uh, how, tell you where it cost. should go in your house or whether it's practical for your home? Exactly, exactly. They'll, and you'll get an idea of, of, of who knows, who has more experience, basically. Because there there's a lot of new installers out there. Um, and you'll, you'll get a very good idea of what is the best location and should I do solar at my home? And, and now you have community solar to choose from. And again, for our viewers who miss the community solar, that's kind of a field out there where you can get part of your electricity, right? Yes, yes, it's a beautiful thing because you can, you can own a piece of, you can own solar and live in a house in the woods or live in a house surrounded by, that, well, you can live in an apartment, condo, wherever, wherever, you don't have to live in a house that's gonna have solar on your home. Well, Mark Bamba of uh, Positive Energy in Granville, New York, which is a solar energy company. I want to uh, thank you so much for joining us. And, you know, from you, I didn't realize how, you know, matter of fact, solar energy is becoming. It's more and more out there. Yes, it is. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Joe. I'm Joe Kahn, and have a great day.